where I'd like to start is around this idea of failure and fear. And I'm interested because you, you've, you've worked with so many clients and been through experiences in your life that have forced you to face failure, I'm sure in various capacities. How do most people think about those two things and what is a better framework for thinking about those? Yeah, so it's a great question. And it's one near and dear to my heart, fear and failure. They have been a big part of my life and continue to as well. And it's like, get over myself. Right. Right? It's just part of the deal, this whole life that we're going through. And just having a different conversation with myself. Of, instead of like, especially growing up, I had a, I, and it's natural not to want to fail, right? Not, we have a huge and a very strong drive to look good and be right. Yeah. And if we look bad and we're found to be wrong, that's fearful, right? And so over time, I learned that my view of failure was not serving me because I was afraid to take action. And how it would show up in my life is wanting to have things perfect. So I would hide out as a perfectionist, knowing that, hey, everything has to be right. Everything has to be just right before I let it out into the the interwebs right before i put out this email or the social media post or this this copy out there into the world what if there's a misspelling what if it goes out to the wrong people okay yeah i need to wait just to make sure gotta triple check it you know where i come from in the seal teams you know if things go wrong people can get hurt people can die right mm -hmm. so i used to tell that story in my head and then one day you know i'm like okay rich get over yourself nobody's gonna get hurt by sending out an email stop hiding because this is just me trying to justify not taking action. And so when I was willing to hold up the mirror to myself going, what do I want? Do I want to be right and be fearful and be a perfectionist? Or do I want to just let that go and start taking action? And when I embraced a concept that I chose to take on and it's progress over perfection, right? I, I've heard many times before, right? The, the only place you find perfection is in the dictionary. And to me, it was more like a bumper sticker until I chose like, what if that were true? What if it was about progress, not perfection? Mm -hmm. What if I let go of trying to be perfect yep. and allow the progress to happen? And for me, and in most of my life, what I've come to learn is simply how much do I believe that to be true? So if I was able to put that on a scale, like one to 10, mm -hmm. and embracing the concept of progress over perfection, and let's say last year, I got up to a, a seven. Well, my seven last year is about a three today because my awareness and my willingness and my belief in what I think about that concept is completely different than what it was a year ago. Right. And so my willingness to go, wow, isn't that interesting? Isn't that amazing that I can tell myself a more powerful story? And as I start taking action, then I have the opportunity to actually create something extraordinary. But I could sit there until it's perfect and never take action. And when I realized and when I was willing to have the courage to look at myself going, dude, you just have to throw up the flag because you're just hiding. This, this whole perfection story you're talking about is simply a way for you not to have to take action. Right. Right. And as soon as I had the courage to really look at that and go, oh, that hurts. That, that's a dagger right to the heart, man. You should see all my successes over here. But the reality of it is, it's like, no, I'm playing a small game. There's so much more within me if I was willing to let go of that concept and just embrace the progress and be willing to just get sloppy, be wrong, and just keep moving forward. And that's been a huge um, way in for which me to see things as opposed to how I chose to see them before. Can we talk about self-talk for a minute? We all have these scripts, subconscious or conscious, that are on repeat in our mind and to become aware of those and then over time work to replace them with more beneficial beliefs and thoughts and words that we actually hold true, not just that we that we say because it's the right thing to say, but that we actually feel in our heart and soul that these things are true crossing that bridge is not an easy thing to do for you before going into training with the teams and then going through that process and coming out going into the field was there any scripts you had to replace and how did you go about that process so when i was in the teams one of the things 
you know, I used a lot of my upbringing in which to help me get through and support my training to get through. It was a test to get into the SEAL teams. And part of the training, you know, the instructors are world-class at trying to get underneath the armor and right to your heart of what your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. And I was world-class at being able to put up walls so people could not penetrate my life. So you had that real tough guy, like rip an arm off, rub some dirt on it, keep moving, right? I could play that game. I could do that. Like I had that gear in me, like just do not quit. No matter how bad it gets, we don't quit, right? right? Your heart might pop on the sand, but that's okay. I'd much rather die than quit. Mm -hmm. So I had that gear, right? Awesome gear to have. But if that's the only tool you have moving through life, it's going to be quite limited. And one of the days I had, I was out for a run and I have some of my, my best visualizations when I'm running. Yeah, me too. And I had this epiphany, like this punch to my face, like this visual punch to my face where it was so obvious to me in my life that it's like, have you ever walked into a bank in the tellers? There's like this plexiglass and the tellers on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh man, those are my relationships in life. That's my wife on the other side of that plexiglass. My ability to connect with other human beings is on the other side of that plexiglass. And for me, that was like a real wake up call because I had to ask myself, like, what do I want? Do I want to go through my life not allowing people in for fear of having these connections? Right. And I could tell myself all kinds of stories of why I had to growing up. Mm -hmm why it served me and why I should keep doing it because it's always been like that. And I don't want to allow anybody to hurt me. I could have been right about that. Or I chose to reframe, tell myself a different story of going, okay, this served me up to this point in my life. And for me to grow as a human being, I'm now going to pick up a new story mm -hmm. because I fought it for a while. It's like, oh man, if I start letting people in, I start acting like I have a heart and emotion. I have to give up my man card. You know, people, you know, if I showed any emotion, oh my God, you know, like men aren't supposed to do that. Especially team right. guys aren't supposed to do that. And I'm like, whose story am I? am I living right now? And do I want that to be my truth? Or do I want to let go of that story, that conditioning and go, what do I want? Am I courageous enough just to ask myself, like, what do you want? Who do you want to be in this world? Yeah. And we will build the muscle to get that. And so when I chose to let the plexiglass down and let people into my life so I can have incredible relationships and connect with other human beings and take myself to a whole new level, I let go of the need to think that I was going to have to give up something. And instead I chose to go, wow, well, if I'm living in first gear, what I'm doing is learning how to create that second gear. Mm -hmm. right? Or the other analogy or metaphor would be if I have a tool chest, I'm going to take the time to learn how to create and use this new tool, right? The ability to take down that plexiglass because my life was more one dimensional. I was just going around and everything was a hammer, right? I was a hammer. Everything was a nail. And I'm like, well, that worked for me up to this point. Didn't beat myself up anymore for it. It's like, awesome. Good learning. What do you want to do moving forward? Hey, here's a screwdriver. Let's learn how to use this thing. And so that set me on a path to go, man, imagine if I picked up more tools in my life. And I was able to use those moving through to have the most rich and meaningful life that I could. And that set me on the path after I got out of the teams to really start to develop that tool chest for a life that I believe is meaningful and purposeful. Was there any particular story or experience or moment during your time with the teams that you would be willing to share that changed your perspective or your perception on fear, failure, success, or mindset in a really pivotal way? There's, there's one in particular that stands out to me right now. And we were going through uh, training once you got into the teams, uh, STT, SEAL tactical training. And it's like getting the new guys up to speed to go into the team and into your platoon. And yeah. um, we were doing operations first time. We were all actually fast roping for the first time. So fast roping is simply at this point, we're in a helicopter and you just kick out this really thick rope Right? You can't quite get your hand around it that, that thick. And then you're going to slide down the rope, usually about 30 feet, onto the roof of a building or a ship or whatever it is. And the first time we did, I remember we're all standing in the helo. 
uh, crouch down a little bit, getting ready to do this exercise. And we're looking around and everybody looks pretty stoic, right? We're all young. Everybody's shaking in their boots. You know, I was, thought for sure I was going to reach for the rope. I was going to miss it. And I was going to, you know, dart right into the ground, right? And it's like you have all these thoughts come up, right? The human brain in action. Yep. And so I'm doing my best just to do some deep breathing, relax the best I could. And I remember my buddy in front of me, he kept freezing at the door, right? His mind just locked up and he would not go, right? He hesitated. And I remember uh, one of our training cadres like, dude, you do that again, you're done. And sure enough, next time we go up, because we did it multiple times, you know, he froze up again. And not bad, like just enough to go, mm -hmm. you don't get to play anymore. And he went away. And for a long time, I thought, oh, okay, you know, hey, he just wasn't right for this job. But as I, I grew and I had some perspective on it, the one thing that really stood out to me is I wish I would have been that guy that could have pulled him to the side and said, man, we're all freaking out right now. It's not natural to grab a really thick rope and slide down it out of a helicopter. I know what you're feeling right now. We got this, man. But I remember when we were all looking around at each other, everybody was so, um, they had a perspective that they had to look like they had everything figured out. And if I would have just looked over and go, man, I'm nervous too. You're going to be fine. We got this. How that may or may not have, but I wish I would have had the courage just to say something like that. Wow. Because I know he's a great guy and three, four more times later, he would have been fine. In my mind, that's what I believe. And so now when I get some perspective on it, it's like, man, I wish I, wish I could have been that for him. And how do you think that that experience, but really the, the learnings that you were able to embody after that has transferred over to the work that you do now in your coaching business, you versus you, and just talk a little bit about the perspective that you bring when, when working with clients. I've been fortunate to be able to work with some incredible people from all walks of life from, you know, I've, I've gotten to work with professional athletes in the national hockey league. I get to work with the Philadelphia Flyers and Lehigh Valley Phantoms. I work with some of the people in the largest financial institutions in the world. And I work with vets with PTS, right? They come back from combat and have done and seen things that you wouldn't wish on any human being. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have this common denominator of wanting to be better, right? They're coming into coaching. And sometimes I work with people's therapists as well in conjunction with their coaching. And at the end of the day, we're all looking to become a better version of ourselves, wherever we may be. And we're all human beings going through challenges. Like nobody I coach doesn't have a challenge. Usually a typical thing, Rich, I've got no time. And I've got all the, you know, once they start getting real and we start getting into some meaningful coaching, we all have challenges. And what I've learned is like, stop trying to remove all your problems and start embracing the opportunity for growth. So how we view challenges, how we view failure, how we view the things in our life make all the difference, right? So when my, when I'm coaching people, they have their challenges and we reframe it in such a way that they become opportunities for growth. So then we start to remove the obstacles, the burdens, and now we start to take them on as opportunities to become that next version of ourselves, become a better human being, right? To be able to serve in a more impactful way, to be able to lower the anxiety, lower the issues of whatever they're trying to solve in the moment, knowing that when one problem goes away, another one pops up. And it's like, okay, how can we move into more meaningful problems in which to help serve and solve? And mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the most impactful things I, I get to do now.